uh, let's start with the uh, functions chapter this time. Uh, we've, uh, we've gone over types last time. So now we continue with functions from the third chapter of the book. Um, this chapter is quite big and I don't think we'll manage to finish it off in one day. So most likely I'll continue next Friday, but we'll see. Uh, each uh, subsection has a lot of um, exercise, exercises too. So yeah, bear with me. And I, I don't pretend to have understood completely everything, but hopefully uh, we'll uh, manage to go through it. Let, uh, feel free to interrupt me or make any questions if you need to. So uh, just to begin, uh, the learning object objectives for this chapter is, well, basically, obviously, to learn how to write and, automi and automate uh, our commonest tasks in R. Uh, and as this would make our lives way easier, as we'll see uh, in the introduction part that follows, uh, we'll also learn how to name functions in R uh, using consistent rules, uh, which is very important in order to uh, keep a consistency in our uh, code and, you know, uh, write cleaner as much as possible. And then, uh, obviously, uh, we'll learn how to use comments uh, inside the R functions in order to make uh, the, how to say, like, our, our functions even more easy to be understood also from ourselves, but also from others that might use them. And then we will learn how to use uh, conditionals in our, our functions, uh, like if and else statements. And we will also see um, how to use the switch statement and also how to, to use the cut and make continuous variables more discrete in this way. Uh, the, the other subchapters would be about consistent arguments in R functions and uh, giving default values to arguments in R, fu R functions. And then we have to, uh, we'll, we'll see how to check the values of the arguments uh, in order to make sure that every, everything works fine in uh, in our, our functions, and then we will use to use the we, we will learn how to use the dots arguments in our functions, and then we will have like the return values and the the environments and lexical scoping. So let's begin with the introduction, which is basically uh, an explanation on of how uh, we shall use uh, and when actually to use functions. And as it points out here, uh, functions allow us to uh, automate common tasks uh, in a more powerful and in general better way than copy and pasting does. And the three big, big advantages of uh, writing functions rather than just copy and paste code is that a, we can give a function an evocative name that makes the code easier to understand, which is way better because we actually um, kind of know why we're using a function while copy paste can be a bit messy and you have to go over it and be sure that it does what it does what you want you what you want to do every time. Uh, also, a big plus is that as requirements change, you need to change and update code only in one place instead of many. So instead of going over all your code and change all the appropriate um, uh, parts of it, you can change only one bit of code and then uh, the, the function will, will do its job every time. And lastly, you kind of eliminate the chance of making incidental mistakes when you copy and paste. Uh, which is basically um, when you don't update uh, a variable name in one place and this messes up all your code. So uh, as it says here, uh, writing a good functions, writing good functions in general uh, is not something that you learn 
um, once and for all, but you actually get better with practice. And um, even after a lot of years of practice, you're still learning better techniques and ways of approaching goal problems. Which is, I think, in general, the, um, um, how to say, um, uh, it's the case with coding, right? You just get better along the way and more efficient. And uh, another very important thing here is that uh, good style, good coding style and function is quite important. And it depends also in correct punctuation. As uh, I mean, you, you can go without it, as it said here, as it says here, but it sure is easier when you use good and efficient punctuation because um, it's uh, it makes your code more readable. We will see more about styling in the next uh, sub chapters a bit later on. So, uh, well, I don't know if you have checked the book, uh, but. Uh, all the examples use just Bazaar, so we won't need any extra packages than the ones that we use, like Tidyverse. And so, when should we write a function? Uh, a, a general rule of thumb is when you use, uh, or if you have already copy and pasted a block of code more than twice, um, it's a good time to create a function of it. Uh, and what's important about writing a function instead of copy and pasting, as we said before, is that you avoid incidental mistakes. So in this case here, I, I don't know if you can spot the mistake, but as it says here, uh, for DFB, uh, he forgot to uh, change uh, an A to a B. Well, I think I think the A is in the minimal. Yes, here. It's here, right? Yeah. Okay, so here he forgot in this case, so he has already changed it uh, in the beginning, but later on because it appears twice in this code chunk, uh, he forgot to change it. And in this case, the code becomes, you know, a bit messier to, to troubleshoot as well. So uh, extracting repeated code out into a function is a good idea because it prevents you from making this type of copying and paste mistake. So how, uh, how many inputs does this code have? Because we have to uh, decide how we can turn this into uh, a function. And in order to decide and um, be and make it and you know, put it in, no, write a function out of it anyhow, uh, we have to decide how many inputs we have. So in this case here, the only input is that one here. So uh, it's a good idea to rewrite, as it says, the code using uh, temporary variables. Uh, and uh, we can give those temporary variables general, general names. So um, let's call uh, this numeric vector he, uh, x, sorry. Uh, a, Blah, blah, blah. Yes, this is like the, the, the example that it had before. And here we have X. And we actually, after we have like this, we create this table. And then uh, we name X if uh, A. So in this case, we can uh, replace EFA with X in all these incidents that it occurs. So X minus mean X again. Uh, then we have to remove all the NA uh, values because we have like 
Na removed true. And then we divide with the max x, again, dropping all the, the Na variables, uh, values, uh, minus uh, minimum of x, and again, removing all uh, Na values. And these are the, this is the, the output of this code. Uh, again, though, we can see that there is some duplication in this code, namely all these x, uh, comma, uh, na, remove, blah, blah, blah. So uh, instead of writing this three times, we can do the following. We can uh, create this uh, new vector. Uh, which is range x, uh, and then we keep the removing of NAs. So rewriting the code, uh, given that uh, R and D is what I just said, we can write it as x R and G of the first uh, yeah, so this is correct. This is actually from the book. It's just well, anyhow, he has like what he has done at this point is that he has substituted uh, this part of the code here with the RNG, with a new uh, variable. Um, so he makes the, the code cleaner and he um, also uh, avoids repetition, which is always uh, a good thing. Uh, okay, so thank you, Daniel, for the range function in R returns the maximum and minimum value of the vector and volume of the data frame in R. Yeah, so I'm guessing range range one chooses the minimum, range two chooses the maximum. So since we've assigned the range function already to RNG, I guess that's why you can now approximate it using x minus rng1, x r, I mean, that's just my immediate guess for why it's using one and two. Yeah, that, you, you are right. Mm -hmm. You are right in this case. I think. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Fantastic, for uh, providing the, the definition and for helping out in this case, because I wasn't sure. Uh, I, I think I looked it up and it made sense at, at some point, but now it didn't. So thank you for uh, clarifying this. Uh, so, with the same, um, with the range function here, he can call a minimum when he uses one, and when he uses two, he can uh, calculate the maximum of the x. Yeah, of x. So, instead of rewriting every time uh, all this, he has just replaced it with a new variable. And another important point is when you have interme intermediate calculations, it's a good, uh, it's a good practice to turn them into named variables because it makes way clearer what we're doing when coding. And for example, uh, here, uh, as he says, he has turned, he has turned all this first thing into something that is, first of all, um, shorter and other and furthermore, more uh, easier to understand it 
the components of it makes make more sense. And so he is ready now to turn to turn it into a function. As it says, as he says in some part, I don't remember where exactly, uh, it's always better to check your code before creating a function so as to be sure that it whatever you turn into a function works before um, assign your code into a, a function that may uh, cause problems right, later on. And so he uh, names this function as rescale01. Uh, and we can see here the syntax of the function. So you have to use uh, this arrow here, and then you write function, and then you have a parenthesis inside which you put the arguments. And then you have a curly bracket. And after that, you have to uh, say to, to write your code block. Uh, which should be always uh, intended, indented by two spaces. And at the end, you have to close the function, you have to have a curly bracket um, in, an, in a line uh, without anything else. So he created this function where RNG is range here. Yeah, okay, the NA removes variables and he uses this code here and he closes the function. So in this case he uses the function and uh, he has this vector inside the, the function and he returns back this. This is the output. Um, so, three key steps to creating a new function is the following. So you need to pick a name, which uh, preferably should be used, should be uh, quite, um, um, characteristic of what the, the function is doing. Uh, here, for example, he used the rescale one because the function actually rescale a vector to lie between zero and one. Uh, and then you have to list uh, the inputs or arguments. Um, as we said, here we had just had one argument with, which is x, so things were easy. Uh, but in case we had more, we have to call them um, like this. So it would be x comma z uh, no z uh, y comma z. And the third point is you uh, should place the code uh, in the body of a function into curly brackets. Uh, so this is basically the um, the three most important things that we should always keep in mind when writing functions. Um, and as I said before, that uh, it's easier to start with working writing code before turning it into a function, as uh, it's better to um, to be sure that it works. Uh, because if we have a function that is problematic and then it would be harder to work on it later. Uh, so, uh, okay, here he just uh, gives different uh, inputs to he, the, the function that he created before, just to see uh, the different outcomes. Uh, it's nothing too, too interesting. And uh, uh, yeah, okay, here it says something about unit testing, but as it says, it's beyond the, the scope of the book. But um, 
Yeah, because it says that you can actually uh, unit unit uh, testing is when you create interactive tests um, to automate it. Actually, uh, a more formal test, but we want now and I I don't know actually how to do that. And uh, what else we have here then. As it says, we have we can simplify uh, the original example, um, the the one the code that we had uh, here. Here, he is using now the function to uh, point out how much easier and more readable it is. So, silly of me that I haven't put the two code chunks together. But yeah, here you can see how much clearer, clearer and easier to, to read this chunk of code is compared to the one above. And also, as it says, one class of copy-paste errors are successfully eliminated in this way. Mm, again, you, we can see that there is a bit of replication still because we are using all the rescale Again and again, but um, we'll see later in the chapter in the iteration actually how to uh, get over this problem too. Uh, so then it says that another advantage of function is that if our requirements change, we only need to make the change in one place, as we said before, and um, it says here that, for example, in this um, function that we have created already here, uh, in case we have, uh, in case actually the, functions, the function fails at some point, um, we can fix only one place in the function and it would still work. So. Uh, here we have uh, infinite here. So we have like a vector from one to 10 and it's infinite. So here uh, it can be completed. We have like the NA, uh, but here what it actually changes is that, that he adds in the previous um, uh, code block that he had created for rescale one. He adds the finite uh, equals true. And now uh, it works. It works even with this variable here. And yeah, yeah it, it, it just, uh, just, just the last remark on the on this objection is that um, we should try to avoid repeating oneself because the more the more repetition in our code, the, the more problem. Uh, sorry, the more places um, we should remember to change, and it's more likely that we will miss something that later on would be would cause problems and we will then have to go back and fix it. And yeah, uh, if, if we can uh, minimize uh, repetition, the better. Now to the exercises. Uh, in, in the first uh, demonstration of uh, how we could like, create a function from a chunk of code and all that. Uh, we said that uh, the only, um, yeah, the only input, the only argument of this function here is the X. Uh, why, uh, for example, true is not uh, an input, it's not an argument. So why is true not a parameter, an argument to rescale uh, one? And what would happen if X contained a single missing value? And if remove RNA, uh, uh, remove non uh, available values, uh, was false. So, 
So this is the, the, the function that we had initially. And then uh, if X contains a single missing value and remove an A is, is false, then this function still returns a non-missing value. So uh, we have the scale at the alternative here, function X point NA remove uh, equals false. So instead of true, it's here true, we have false. Uh, and then everything else remains as it is. But we see that in this case, because we have false here, we get an A uh, as, a, as a result. We have a, a vector that contains an NA. So we, we get an NA also in the output. Um, yeah, here. Yes, so this is like, again, the, the same alternative function with the same vector. And we have actually added the NA remove equals true, but because uh, the function itself has NA remove false, we still get NAs here. Uh, so here we also say that the option finite equals true in the range um, here, this finite equals true, uh, will drop all non-finite elements and an A is a non-finite element. And, but, but as it says, if both finite equals false and an A remove equals false, uh, then this function will actually return a vector of NA values. Um, so for example, if uh, trying to demonstrate what I, I, I just said, if we have here remove NA uh, equals false and finite equals false as well, uh, then, and the rest of the function is the same and uh, putting a, a vector into this uh, function will just return a series of an A's. So I mean, I don't know. I, I don't know if it, if it was clear. I actually wasn't quite sure how like, uh, I mean, the, the exercises at some point were a bit complicated for me. Uh, so I actually try to, I, I, at first I tried to solve them myself. Sometimes I just look the solution and try to work out what happened. For example, in this case, I actually had to look into the, uh, the answer that they, they had already in the, the book with the solved exercises. Uh, but I don't know if you have any questions, let me know. I, I'm not sure if I explained everything very well. But yeah, it's more like a demonstration of uh, what all these um, uh, extra conditions, let's say, in the, and parameters in the functions do. Uh, because uh, I think what's, what it's trying to explain is that when you have uh, uh, NA remove and finite in here, they are not, um, they are not parameters, but when you have them here, they actually are, they are arguments of the function. So they kind of, um, Yeah, they, they act 
in a different way, let's say. So, um, uh, here in the second variant of uh, rescale one, uh, the infinite values are left unchanged. So we have to rewrite rescale one so that minus infinite is mapped to zero and infinite is mapped to one. Um, so in this case, what we should do uh, is the following. We take function x, we keep the, the next part as it already is with the range function here for min and max. And then we add uh, a variable uh, y, which actually is uh, x minus range one, which is uh, minimum and uh, range two, which is maximum. It's actually the same thing as it was before. So here we assign this to y and then y, uh, this is like the, the Boolean uh, true false, the logical operator and is actually minus infinite. And this is in this case zero and if it equals infinite, it's uh, one. So in this case, okay. So and this is the output. I'm not quite sure though. Uh, I had. I, I, and I'm still not sure about like this part of the, of the new function because I'm not sure if it creates like a, a list or it's just, uh, no, it actually just selects, right? It selects from Y, the case that it uh, is true that is minus, right? Or it's assigned, no, it assigns zero to this case and one. I'm not quite sure about that. So, uh, okay. Uh, So here, what it does afterwards is that it it uses a function with the vector infinite minus infinite, then zero uh, from it has also values from zero to five, and then also an NA uh, value. And what the function returns is the following. Um, then we had, I don't know, I feel that the first two exercises were, I don't know, quite weird for me. The third one was more um, easy, I think, because we had its time, one part of code, and we had to just understand what it's doing and create a function out of it. And uh, probably rewriting it in a way that is more expressive and less duplicative. So in this case, we are given this code here, mean is NAX, which actually just, if we think about it, it calculates the number of NAs in vector. And uh, we can name it prop NA or 
calculate an a and it's a function the only argument is x as it is here and then we just insert it here um, and then we don't forget of we need to close the, the curly bracket and using it with some you know, data which uh, would return uh, the proportion of uh, NAs, NA values that are in, in a vector. Then we had the X divided by some X uh, removing uh, NA values. And actually what this code does is it standardizes a vector so that it sums to one. So, uh, quite um, intel intelligible and easy to understand and use name would be sum to one uh, function. And we have here arguments X and NA remove uh, false. Um, We have uh, x divided by sum, and as it it just uh, have to say we just insert the uh, the code as it is to our code uh, block here, and the last one the last. Uh, code that we have to try and turn into a function is this one here that we have the standard deviation uh, x and removing NAs. And then we have to divide it with the mean of x again, uh, removing NA, NAs. And this calculates the coefficients of uh, variation. And yeah, we should assume, of course, that x uh, only values that are non negative. And um, this is actually the, the, standard, the standard deviation of the divided mean. So in this case, we can create a, a, a coefficient variate, coef variation as coef is quite a, an, an easy uh, way to code coefficient and variation uh, because um, it's a more described descriptive way to explain what the function does. And again, we can use X as an argument and uh, NA remove, uh, it, here it should be true, right? Uh, Yeah, I yeah, I'm not sure why I have used here, but uh, it might have been true because we want because here it does have true anyway, and then we just uh, add in the code block are what, what we want R to actually do. And then we can try and check it with some real code. So here the coefficient variation of the of this vector is 527. And again here we got yet an A though. Uh, okay, yes, because we have, because I had this one here, so it doesn't remove uh, NAs. So here we have an NA, but if we insert NA remove equals 
true here, it would remove this one and it would deal only with this one. So we will get the, the coefficient. Everything okay with this this one? Yeah, I think it's fine. I think it's fine. I think it's fine. So, great. Uh, so here, this one, I will prefer just skipping this one because it was too complicated for me and I'm not way, I'm no way sure that I will be able to, to go over it. It's about uh, skewness and variance and how you can actually make them intuitions. And yeah, I'll, we can discuss it later if, if you'd like. Uh, yes. And then we have these functions here, is directory and is readable. And we have to actually point out if, uh, even if they are too short, are they useful? And uh, well, someone would probably say that, yeah, they are too, uh, too short to be functions, but on the other hand, as, it's it's quite handy to have a function to, to check whether a path x is directory. We see here that uh, we have uh, the argument is here is x, and then we have file info. This uh, this function of bazar that checks if something that we insert x is there is directory. And here is readable. This function actually checks um, uh, if the, the, uh, the user actually has permission to open uh, a file. And yeah, as I said, it, it, they might be short, but someone would think that uh, they could be useful as they make um, clearer what the code uh, is actually doing. And they, so especially if, if you use them often, it could be an option. Uh, and interesting that it's not explicitly said here, uh, but uh, it is mentioned later in the chapter is that uh, when you have like short, very short arguments, you just can skip the, the curly brackets and all, and you can have everything in one line of code. So to make it uh, more efficient. And last exercise for this subsection is to, to, to actually write try and write a function of the little funny boo foo -foo, um, poem. It is actually a bit silly too. Uh, there is a, a lot of uh, repetition as we have seen before, but well, I don't know if, if the, there's any point in <laughs> going over it. I mean, yeah, okay. Um, it, it, it's actually, um, uh, how to say, you, we can create a function here, let's say, fret, because the, the fairy actually threatens the, the bunny foo-foo, little bunny foo-foo, I don't want to see you scooping up the field and booping them on the head and blah, blah, blah. And he, she gives the bunny three chances, and if, if it doesn't stop, it would be turned into a boo, into a goon, sorry. Uh, so we can create a function. Uh, the argument would be chances. So give chances from root fairy to foo -foo. number equals chances. And condition is that uh, don't behave if it 
doesn't behave as the fairy please, as, as the fairy wishes. And the consequence, of course, would be to turn into a ghoul. So anyway, I mean, it's, it's a bit stupid. And then we have like the lyric function, so it's foo foo. Uh, it's, it's actually the same that we had done in the pipes uh, chapter that we have hope through forest and then scoop up field mouse and then bob on head and come down come good fairy said blah 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 good fairy and here we can actually have lyric and thread three and then lyric and thread two because she threatens it three, three eyes and then thread one and then finally turn into a ghoul. So yeah, I don't know. It was a weird thing, but, uh, and again, I, I actually had to see how it was done because I, I don't know, it was a bit complicated for me. So the takeaway messages from this part of the, of the book is uh, consider a function whenever we have a code, a block of code that we code, copy and paste more than twice. And never forget like these crucial steps for creating a function, uh, picking a name that makes clear what the function does, um, decide which are the arguments or inputs that should go inside the function. Uh, as we saw before, like function, parentheses, arguments. Uh, yeah, obviously the, the code goes inside squibbly brackets, as we said before, uh, which go after the function. And last, we should check uh, the function with a few inputs to make sure it's working. So yeah, before just saving it, and uh, it's way better to um, Uh, okay, it might, yeah, probably, uh, because I see that we're running out of time, and oh, Demi, yeah, thank you for being here with us, with us. If you have, I don't know if he has already left, and yeah, then we have to continue with functions for humans and computers, but we can do it next time, next Friday, if you think so, and probably, yeah, we'll try to uh, focus more on the exercises or something mm -hmm. or I, I don't know I it was a bit intense for me to understand what is going on here because I, the the general idea is not that hard but I feel that some mm -hmm. of the demonstrations are too much mathematical I don't know yeah yeah Probably. true I agree with you I mean true 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 Okay. Well, it's fine. I mean, it's a, it's a good lecture there, so I, I did enjoy the lecture. Okay, I'm Especially sorry. I mean, I, it wasn't like, I, I know that it, I, I wouldn't be uh, very, very good at it, but hopefully uh, it wasn't too bad. So I, I did, this will die, this will, this will give me some time to prepare for better for the next uh, chapters too. No so problem. see you next week. Um, sure. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Marie. Thank you. Thank you, yes, Daniel. Thank you.